welcome to another episode of Quality Time with Clive. We're continuing our look into Scalar. We've taken a look at how to just go ahead and create simple chord structures, chord progressions, and how to use the performance feature. Today, I'm going to show you how to add in your own chords. Let's say that you're experimenting with some chords that you may not find necessarily within the banks and the settings and the presets. So in this case, I'm playing around with a chordal harmony. Let's say that you're interested in music of Paul Hindemith or Bella Bartok, you might come across music uh, like this. So anyhow, I have this chord progression starting on A, and these are actually all stacked perfect force, and then I'm just going to move outwards. Let's say that that's the chord progression I want. So there's a little record button right here, and it's just going to listen to what I have, and I'm going to try to play this together. And there we have it. All right, so we can map it to our MIDI keyboard. In Scalar, they call this binding. So we're going to go ahead and bind it. Let's see what we have. Oh, I'm down here, so down here, so I just need to play up the octave. There we go. And let's go ahead and record something here. And I'll go ahead and quantize it really quickly. I'm set to 16th notes, but let me just change the grid here to, let's say, quarter note. Select all. There we go. And looks good. Let's go ahead and listen to it. Right, so there you have your own little chord progression. Uh, we could go ahead and put it down in our pattern section down here. Let's go ahead and do that. And we can actually save this chord progression as well. So we have to think of a fancy name. So once you have a name for your chord progression, we can hit the save button. And I'm going to call this Quartal Harmony. And go ahead and uh, click OK. So you'll notice that over on the users now, we can actually call up my Quartal Harmony right here. And here it is, my Quartal Harmony. And there's my session. And away we go. And if we wanted to edit the notes even further, there's two different ways that we can edit. One is by going Edit down here. And this pulls up. Underneath each chord, we can change the octave, we can change the inversion, and we can change the semitone. But let's say that you wanted to change the actual pitches. There's a different way to do that, so let's close down this. Another way to edit your chords is to control click and go to edit chord. And now that this one is highlighted, there's a orange box around it. I can see the actual pitches that I have here, so if I wanted to add in additional notes. Now when I play it, it's now added those notes in, so I gotta remember what I have. That's, actually, that's pretty cool. But anyway, let's take those out. And then be sure to go ahead and make sure that you're actually editing the chord that you want rather than thinking that you're editing this one when in fact you have this one highlighted. So that's really, really important. And that's basically all there is to adding your own chords in using this little record feature and then also doing some of the editing down here to get the effects that you want. Very, very simple way of getting your ideas in and creating your own user bank of chord progressions that are useful to you and your music making. Hope this is helpful. I'll see you next time. Thank you.